There's another person on campus with the same name, so many people call him Good Adam and the Neckbeard Bad Adam. Are you me? What I do, are do me. <laughs> you sound like a jerk. Hello, friends, and welcome back to Red X, your source for the freshest daily Reddit content anywhere on the internet. Promise, swearsies. It's just a fact, and it's totally science. Go ahead and look it up. We are finally back to some fresh content. I hope that you guys enjoyed Valentine's Day. Valentine's week, rather. I know that my analytics did not. <laughs> Luckily, however, my wife's channel has been growing pretty consistently. So if you don't get enough of me here, there's always a little bit of me over there that you might not have heard. The link is in the description if you'd like to check it out. Probably also in a pinned comment, too. I've got some really interesting tales from Ramtide called Tales from the Travel Stop which we will get into probably tomorrow, but it is rather long. I just wanted to knock out a little shorty before doing some streaming here, um, and probably while this is live, I will be streaming some stuff, so come on over and say hello. I'd definitely be glad to meet you and greet you. Anyhow, before I ramble on for too much, let us go ahead and jump right into these neckbeard stories and see what it do today. Adam, the neckbeard I go to college with. Ooh, college beard. This is the story of a neckbeard I go to college with. Huh. <laughs> I made a Reddit account just to write this because I refuse to let this story go untold. That's why the user is Adam, the neckbeard. I kind of want that account. If you're done with it, can you toss it my way? <laughs> I could write some first person neckbeard stories. This neckbeard is a junior this year, studying civil engineering. The events of this story are still happening since we're still in college. I'll call our neckbeard Adam, not his real name. Adam's weirdness, creepiness, and foul smell <laughs> are well known among our year at college. It's a relatively small school, so even if you didn't know Adam personally, there's a good chance that you've at least heard stories of him. The tale must be told. There's another person on campus with the same name, so many people call him Good Adam, and the neckbeard, Bad Adam. <laughs> On the off chance that someone from my school reads this, they'll immediately recognize who this story's about, so I'll try not to identify myself if possible. Adam doesn't really look like a stereotypical neckbeard. He's not fat. In fact, he's quite skinny. He is very out of shape, though. They call it skinny fat, OP. So much so that walking up a flight of stairs gets him noticeably out of breath. Jesus. Adam has short black hair and a thick beard, which seems to connect right down to his chest hair. Ugh. <laughs> it's a hairy little dude. Adam doesn't dress like a neckbeard at all, though. He's hardly the forefront of fashion, but the clothes that he wears are in no way out of the ordinary. He usually just wears jeans, t-shirts, and sneakers with a sweatshirt or a jacket when it's cold. What certainly is out of the ordinary is Adam's smell. He smells like awful B.O. and unwashed ass. <laughs> Adam's smell literally lingers on the air in places that he has been. Jesus. It's so bad that someone on campus nicknamed Adam, He who does not wash. <laughs> the unwashed one. <laughs> Adam is studying engineering, and he's made it to junior year, so he's at least moderately intelligent. Adam genuinely does know a lot about some topics, but he considers himself far more intelligent than he actually is, and he'll talk out of his ass about anything and everything if given half the chance. In most cases, it's very obvious that he's just completely making everything up. <laughs> See, he thinks he's so smart that he can just lie to people's faces. Adam was raised Jewish and considers himself an observant Jew. How can I combine the neckbeard and the Jew voice? It's so hot out here, I'm sweating, guys! Ah! Uh. <laughs> He's extremely interested in Judaism and the country of Israel, and can often be found talking about both subjects to anyone that he's with. I'm sure everybody finds that super interesting. <laughs> Before I tell more tales of Adam, I think I'll need to establish the characters that will be relevant in this story. All of the names that I use in this story are fake, by the way. Matthew was Adam's friend from freshman year. 
He was also an observant Jew, but unlike Adam, he never rubbed his religious views in everyone's face. In fact, besides being Jewish, he and Adam had basically nothing in common. Matthew was very friendly and outgoing, he liked running and going to the gym, and his hygiene was perfectly fine. Steve was a friend of Matthew's, and then by proxy a friend of Adam's. Steve and Matthew met at the beginning of freshman year, and they went running and went to the gym together, and it was through Matthew that Steve met Adam. Steve's a nice guy, and he tolerated Adam, whereas many people just shunned him. As a result of this, Adam considers Steve a good friend. Steve is also studying engineering, so Adam bothers him with questions quite frequently. Kevin is Adam's roommate from freshman year. They were randomly assigned to live together. Over time, Kevin and Steve became friends too because they had classes together. But while Steve tolerated Adam's presence, Kevin openly disliked him. And after they moved out, Kevin refused to talk to Adam at all. Jack is another person that Adam considered a friend. He and Adam met because they had classes together, which seems to be how Adam meets most people. <laughs> he made the same mistake that Steve did and tolerated Adam just enough to make Adam consider him a friend. When Steve wasn't available, Adam turned his annoying attention to Jack. That's quite a few characters. Let's see how many of them I remember. <laughs> First, Adam is shockingly socially inept. Some people around the school theorize that he has mild autism. I'm not at all a psychologist, but I personally don't believe that he does. Adam is remarkably bad at interacting with other people, that's for sure, but he has none of the other typical symptoms of autism. I believe he's just very strange and lives in his own bubble of reality. I should also note that although Adam is very creepy, I believe he doesn't actually have any malicious intent. He's just awful at social interactions. Here are some highlights. Yay, highlights! <laughs> Adam likes to take long walks at night. Along these walks, if Adam sees someone he remotely knows, he will follow that person and bother them until they get to wherever they're going. <laughs> People, especially girls, are very uncomfortable having this creepy, smelly homunculus appear out of the darkness <laughs> and just follow them around. <laughs> <laughs> is he at least making conversation or something on the way or he's just stalking that's literally the definition of stalking god adam is unable to comprehend when a group of people is splitting apart one time adam was bothering a person named nick nick was walking back to his dorm and adam followed him nick opened the door and said see you later adam and walked into his room adam followed nick into his room and continued bothering him. <laughs> Nick had to say, get out of my room, Adam, before he finally got the hint. <laughs> wow. <laughs> As an observant Jew, Adam gets all his meals at the kosher counter in the cafeteria. Adam can often be found standing at the kosher counter trying to have a conversation with the people working there even though there are other people waiting in line and these people are trying to work. Fits in with his social ineptitude, I suppose. One time, Adam was in the library looking for a girl named Emily, who he said was his math tutor. He found Steve and Adam asked Steve if he had seen Emily. Steve had no idea who Emily was and asked Adam what she looked like. The only description that Adam provided Steve was that Emily was really hot, like easily an 8.5. And... She looked like a dancer. And that's when Steve should have said, okay, cool story, bro. Like, what fucking color hair does she have? <laughs> Let's just start there. Jesus. He, he identifies people as numbers, I guess. <laughs> One time while out with a group of people, a girl said she was going back to her dorm and Adam called out to her, You walk into your dorm alone at night? Have fun getting raped. <laughs> <laughs> he meant it as a joke, but no one laughed. <laughs> now, I am laughing now, but it's mostly because of the situation itself. It's not a funny joke, but the fact that a man would call this out <laughs> in the middle of a group of people. Oh, God. <laughs> what a specimen. Uh, one time... Steve was sitting with several people at the university cafeteria. Adam approached him and with no introduction asked, Did you fuck any hot girls lately? 
Steve looked confused for a second and just said, Yes. <laughs> then Adam grinned and said, Nice! <laughs> and walked away. <laughs> oh, Adam. He's the fun sort of weirdo, isn't he? <laughs> Speaking of girls, Adam really wants a girlfriend. But girls are, of course, repulsed by his smell, weirdness, and general creepiness. Adam asks out any girl that he remotely knows, and they all have said no. <laughs> Adam keeps a list in a Google document of all the girls who have rejected him. Uh-oh, that's a big red flag. <laughs> I know that this wasn't like a hit list or anything like that, but, but it's still really creepy though. How do you know it's not a hit list just because it doesn't say hit list at the top? Bruh. <laughs> Why else would he keep the list? That's, that's... That's creep mode. He's a weird guy. He is a weird guy. <laughs> Remember how I mentioned that Adam was Jewish? Well, here are some stories involving his religious views and views about Israel. Oh, this should be rich. <laughs> Adam fully supports Israel and has a fierce hatred for Palestinians. On one occasion, he talked about how sex before marriage is prohibited in Judaism, but it would be okay to have sex with Palestinians because they don't count as people. Yes, he actually said this. Jesus. <laughs> Big yikes, dude. What is going on? Adam sometimes talks about how hot Israeli army women are and says that American army women are always really ugly. Well, I respectfully disagree on that front. <laughs> I met some baddies in the army. Adam visited Israel once. And he talks about it all the time. <laughs> it might be interesting to hear about if he just said it once, but he talks about it all the time. <laughs> Adam said that he really wanted to move to Israel. And everyone encouraged him to do so. If for no other reason, then they wouldn't have to deal with him anymore. <laughs> Matthew had been talking about moving to Israel all freshman year, and when the year was over, he actually did it. Adam was upset that A, he lost his one real friend, and B, Matthew was now fucking all the hot Israeli army women. <laughs> and C, he was just plain jealous of Matthew for having accomplished something that Adam wanted to do. See, but you could totally do it. Throw all your fucking belongings in a sack and buy a plane ticket. Just grab your balls and hope for the best, dude. Like, sometimes that's what you've got to do to get out. I did it when I moved to the Philippines. Ramtide did it when he left our apartment behind and just went to fucking walk the earth. You know, if you really want to get out, then you will get out. If you really want to go someplace, then you will go someplace. Adam obviously doesn't. He likes it as an idea, not as like an actual adventure. Uh, but I digress. <laughs> as I mentioned, Adam and Kevin were roommates. And here are some of the things that happened when they lived together. According to Kevin, Adam showered every day. This was very strange considering his smell. Kevin's theory was that, although Adam showered, he never washed his sheets. So when he lay in his bed, the smell just kind of absorbed back onto him. <laughs> it's really creepy. I don't know how much sense that makes, but it's as good a theory as any, I suppose. Wifey just confirmed it, so yeah, I'd say that's valid. On the topic of smell, Adam's room smelled awful, so much so that he failed the checks that the RAs did because of the pungent body odor. <laughs> Adam said that the smell was not caused by him, but in fact caused by mold. This was very obviously not true, unless the mold was living directly under his armpits. <laughs> Adam had a booby calendar on his wall. Which he said, his mom had given to him when he went off to college. I'm really not sure if this is true or not. Knowing Jewish mothers, it probably is. Lying about your mother giving you a booby calendar is just as weird as your mom actually giving you a booby calendar. <laughs> I wonder if he gets a new one every year for Hanukkah. <laughs> Adam had a major crush on a girl named Sarah. He invited her over to his room and she reluctantly agreed. Oh God, Sarah, why? Adam wanted Sarah to sit on his bed with him, but she instead sat on Kevin's bed while Kevin was sitting at his desk. And she refused 
to move to Adam's side of the room. <laughs> Sarah later became Matthew's girlfriend, much to Adam's dismay. Oh, he got swooped. <laughs> Kevin told the story of the one time that Adam rolled over in the middle of the night, so he was facing away from Kevin's side of the room. And Kevin said that he saw a huge brown stain on the back of Adam's previously white underwear. <laughs> Sophomore year, Adam was friends with a guy named Jason. Halfway through the first semester, at a party in fact, Steve and Kevin talked with Jason and convinced him to get a new roommate. How Kevin lasted a whole year with Adam, we may never know. As part of the process, the resident director of the dorm called Steve to her office to talk about Adam. Steve told the resident director about Adam's hygiene, social ineptitude, and the list. <laughs> the very ominous list. Jason found a new room to move to, and the school board approved the move after talking with Steve. Jason didn't tell Adam that he was moving out, though. One day, while Adam was in class, Jason, Kevin, Jack, and Steve carried all of Jason's stuff to his new dorm. Adam came back and suddenly found that Jason was gone. Adam is also a pathological liar. There are many examples of him just lying for no reason. But here are some of the strangest, most notable, and most ludicrous ones. <laughs> oh god. Adam said that he worked at a Jewish summer camp in high school. This part I do believe is true. Adam said that the camp had an issue with grizzly bears. <laughs> <laughs> so he and all the other counselors had to carry guns to fend off the bears. <laughs> there are only four states in the U.S. that have grizzly bears. Alaska, Montana, Wyoming, and Idaho. Adam's camp is nowhere near any of those states. Also, who would put a summer camp for kids in a place that has that many marauding bears? <laughs> oh, it's classic. Adam went to a Jewish school his whole life until he came to college. One day he was talking about how he and a girl named Rachel used to sneak off of the school grounds so he could figure her and have anal sex with her. I have no idea if this is true, but what Adam said was that Judaism prohibits vaginal sex before marriage, but nowhere does it say that anal sex is prohibited. As a result of this, Adam said, Horny Jewish teens go around having anal sex constantly. <laughs> <laughs> the issue here was that no woman would ever let Adam's sweaty meat fingers anywhere near her lady parts. Never mind allowing him to put his stubby little wiener in her butt. <laughs> <laughs> this one's not completely outlandish. I know a lot of like Muslim girls do that. Growing up in uh, Burbank, there's a pretty big Armenian population, and uh, Muslim chicks would take it in the butt because they're saving their vagina for, for their husband. So, don't quote me on that. <laughs> Never been there, but I heard about it. And if you hear something a hundred times, it must be true, right? <laughs> Adam also said that his dad was the CFO of UPS. The CFO of UPS is a guy named Richard Peretz. And he was certainly not Adam's father. <laughs> when called out on his BS, Adam changed his story to that his dad works at UPS. Okay, that I find believable. <laughs> Don't lie about a Googleable fact, man. <laughs> One day, when someone commented on how sweaty he looked, Adam justified his sweating by saying, he had just finished running six miles. <laughs> Adam gets out of breath walking up the stairs. Satan stands a better chance of having a snowball fight than Adam does making it six miles without keeling over, let alone running. There was a look of, get a load of this guy, around the group before Steve piped up. And he said, Adam, if we add up all the running that you've ever done in your life, it still wouldn't come to six miles. <laughs> You're not wrong, though. Adam insisted that he loved running, to which Steve offered to have Adam come running with him. Adam refused, of course, citing some made-up excuse. <laughs> Despite considering himself very smart, Adam is not doing very well in his engineering classes, and in addition to having an actual tutor provided to him by the school, Adam harassed Steve and Jack to tutor him, 
Despite the fact that Adam was willing to pay, Steve and Jack eventually decided that <laughs> it wasn't worth it. Adam got more desperate. I will provide a text message that Adam sent Steve, which Steve shared around with, well, everyone. You can find it here. There were several notable events involving tutoring. So from these text messages, we know that Adam's name actually starts with an S. Ooh, <laughs> maybe his name's actually Steve. Anyways, Adam says, How old are you at Dynamic? <laughs> what? <laughs> ah, autocorrect, you fucked me again. But it seems it gets worse. <laughs> and if, you know, you wouldn't mind, I know that you'll probably say no, but I'd love for you to tutor me at Dynamics. It would be a creep on her, and I'll pay you $15 an hour. <laughs> it would be a creep on her? Wait, wait, let me, let me rephrase that. I'm willing to pay you $15 an hour if you help me with dynamics. Please, I really need the help, and I know you're very good at math, and it would be a great honor. It okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest, that I don't know what half of that shit means. <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's a pretty weird guy. Asking how old his friend is and telling him that he's going to creep on him. But hell, if you're paying me $15 an hour, you can creep on me all you want. Give me a flat $300, I'll mail you a toothbrush that I used. <laughs> but anywho, now we get into the uh, tutoring events. During freshman year, Adam managed to get into Steve's dorm and went to ask him a question. Adam put his laptop on Steve's bed and Steve knelt down to see what Adam was showing him. This put Steve at nose level with Adam's nether regions, <laughs> giving him a face full of Adam's signature stench. <laughs> Steve recoiled and instead suggested that they go to the library to work on it. So basically, Steve got down on crotch level with a stinky dude and was surprised by what he found. That sounds like it's Steve's fault. <laughs> On a different occasion, Adam got into Jack's dorm building and went to ask him a question. Adam knocked on Jack's door, but Jack realized who it was and didn't answer. Adam then attempted to pick the lock with a mechanical pencil. <laughs> a mechanical pencil. <laughs> it sounds like something my nine-year-old would do. My nine-year-old did, actually, and broke the fucking bedroom door, but we're not going to talk about that. Here's the real kicker, though. The door wasn't locked. <laughs> there was nothing stopping Adam from just opening it. <laughs> oh, that's so good. When Adam was tutored by either Steve or Jack, he liked to derail the conversation by talking about one guess. That's right, Israel. <laughs> Steve said that on one occasion, he had been with Adam for two hours half of which was taken up by Adam's rambling. Adam had no issue paying Steve for the full two hours, as it wasn't his money. It was his parents' money. And really, $15 an hour for a tutor? That's like, that's low. <laughs> there are countless stories of Adam that are worth remembering, but I hope that I've been able to hit some of the high points. Thankfully, due to COVID-19 restrictions, people haven't been seeing him nearly as much recently. That is, unless they have in-person classes with him. Like I said, this is still going on, so if there are any other notable stories of Adam, I'll make sure to make another post. But until then, goodbye, and thank you for reading. Part of me does feel bad for this fucking clown shoe. <laughs> but at the end of the day, it sounds like he's done most of this stuff to himself. Nobody asked you about your summer camp experience fighting off fucking bears with a handgun. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody even asked you about Israel or anything. He volunteers this information, and then when people aren't interested, he can't seem to read the cues and just keeps on going. If he could get his head out of whatever the hell it is that he's always thinking about, <laughs> mostly Palestinians, then he might be able to, like, perform normally. And if he simply changed his sheets, then he might even smell good, and people would, you know, not even know that this guy was once a neck beard. Some simple changes could just turn his entire life around. Unfortunately, it seems like the people around him aren't intent on helping him out. They're just like, yeah, look at this asshole. Let's laugh at his misery. Where really it's like, OP, take him aside, 
and have a frank conversation with him. Whether he listens or not, that's his prerogative, but I would at least rest better knowing that I had made an effort to try and turn this guy into a functional human being. Do you think he's happy with the way things are going? I guarantee you that he's not. That's why he's so weird. <laughs> All this talk about Israel and those those hot Israeli army women and fighting off bears with a handgun, it's all escapism because he doesn't like his life as it is currently. I mean, this is just some fucking bubblegum pop psychology, but maybe, maybe it does apply. If he had the right conversation or met the right person, I believe that Adam could be the good Adam. He could be a totally different Adam. Maybe not the good Adam, but at least the, the passable one. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all society really asks from you. Some of the blame might fall onto the parents for enabling this sort of behavior uh, his entire life, but now he's out in the real world and everybody else has to deal with him, so we as, as a culture need to point him in the right direction and be like, okay, look, dude, it's great that you shower every day, but I'm gonna need you to change your bed sheets at least twice a month. At least. <laughs> Please. For everyone's sake. So once we get changing the sheets consistently every two weeks, maybe we move it up to every week. Obviously Adam was able to get Sarah to come back to his neckbeard troll cave. And if his bed was like nice and clean, she might have even sat on his bed. Who knows where it could have gone from there. But because everybody's just like standing around laughing and judging him behind his back, not having the frank conversation that he needs to hear, he's going to end up repeating the same horrible actions and not really knowing how to pull himself out of this nosedive. So while Adam's definitely a specimen, gives me a fucking amazing laugh, I love the story, I definitely point fingers at the OP and his friends and say, you guys need to sit him down and lay the cards on the table and have this discussion with him. It's, it's a douchebag move to just be like, ha that guy stinks, what an idiot. <laughs> When you could, you know, walk up to him and be like, Hey bro, did you know? Maybe you should change your sheets. I hear you're showering every day. I think that's great. But also try this, you know? That's all part of being a better person. And sure, I sit here and I judge neckbeards. Like, it's basically what the channel is about. But I also try to see them as humans. You know what I mean? And this is basically a, a specimen of a human. He's kind of pathetic and... He doesn't have to be. You could pick him up. You could make him better. And I highly encourage you to try and do so at the very least. Imagine walking six miles <laughs> in Adam's stinky shoes, right? You're, you're not going to be a happy person. And perhaps you've been raised in a way that you don't know how to, how to fix it. So he needs the people around him. Obviously, this is like his first time out and about officially in real society. And while it's not your job to fix him... The effort would be nice, at the very least. I think that's all I got to say about that. <laughs> Emotions were running a little bit high near the end of the episode because, yeah, I want people to, to do right by each other. You know what I mean? Don't snicker and be like, ah, oh, let's make a post on Reddit about this weirdo. Walk up to that weirdo, tell him that he's a weirdo, and at least make the attempt to fix him. <laughs> it's our duty as human beings because we live in a society... Anyways, friends, I hope that you like, comment, and or subscribe if you did enjoy the episode. Check out the links in the description because there is some stuff down there that wasn't featured on the splash page at the beginning of the episode, including my wife's channel. Huzzah! You're also seeing some names on the screen right now, and those are my gorgeous, wonderful, beautiful, generous patrons. And I would like to thank them all. But specifically, Lady Nix, Robert Waits. Pope Squid, Rebecca H, Cider Drinker, Tato Ferret, The Last Shinobi, Mark211, Michael Undead, Aaron W, Mitch, John Hero, Josh K, Candy Sora, and our newest patron, Mr. Diggins, also known as Digiblitz. He'd been supporting me for quite a little while here and there, and I definitely appreciate a pledge, um, especially at this fledgling phase of the channel where I'm basically trying to get it off the ground, trying to do this for a living, and I sort of shot myself in the foot right in the middle of February, but um, we're going to bring it back around. Hopefully you guys will enjoy this video. Hopefully you will share it around. It might not be the deepest level of cringe, but it's also not the most horrible thing that I've ever read. I think it's writing a nice, fine line, and I hope that you guys have enjoyed it sincerely. 
If anybody else would like to support monetarily, that is massively appreciated. As I said, we are just taking off and trying to soar all on our own. But if you can't right now, don't worry about it. I just appreciate you coming by, hanging out with me, and I hope that you come on back and hang out with me again tomorrow with this fresh daily Reddit content. Look what I'm doing over here, yo! <laughs> In order to do so, you'll need to take care of yourselves out there. Wear your mask, wash your hands, do the thing. You know how it goes. But also take some time out and do something that you enjoy today. Something just for yourself. Maybe watching one of those beefy giant Red X videos that I uploaded this week that nobody seemed to watch. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, I hope that you'll always remember that you are loved, you are worthy, and you definitely, definitely deserve it. I will see you in the next one, friends. And until then, bye-bye.